Well, Universal, what did you do? No, they just ruined it. They've added like a purple dragon. This scare zone just completely changed overnight. Why is Universal doing this to me? Um, Chucky is back. He's, he's like a bad rash that won't go away. We're at Universal. It, it's, it's storming again like always. Huge, massive HHN update here. We're going to be going and showing off all the lighting effects that they've added. It looks beautiful and breathtaking. You know what we're going to do right now? Let's go back in time about an hour to my adventure to go find HHN merch at the mall. That's right. There's HHN merch outside of Universal Studios. Our next update for HHN has taken us to the Florida Mall. The Florida Mall is an interesting place. In the drive over, I saw a giant peanut and a Tesla that looked like a spaceship. Now on Twitter, Someone posted, their name is a Spooky Papa, that uh, they found a Jack the Clown like spirit jersey. As we can see, there's Jack on the front and then it says Jack the Clown on the back. It's a hot topic. We on a mission today. When did Squishables become so big that they have their own storefront now? They have little flying saucer aliens. Look at the size of this one. Holy crap. Halloween collection, they have like the Plague Doctor, $48. Then they have a female Plague Doctor. Then they have a giant ghost Squishable and then <laughs> this adorable little cauldron with eyeballs and dragon wings. And then here are the little squishable witches. Oh, somebody left their auto up there, but Peter, this one's for you, man. Diet Coke, zero sugar Coke, but uh, there's no Coke Zero. I, I think they're trying to retire it, buddy. All right, when do you go to Box Lunch? They always have the best Disney merch in here. The Four Town Forever boy band from Turning Red. They have this backpack right here of Gusto's with Remy. They got Nightmare Before Christmas cooking baking set. Then they have the Deadly Nightshade, the Frog's Breath, and the Worm's Wart little containers. And I really like this. So this is the countdown, right? The Halloween. So it's like a clock. And then you can do your countdown to Christmas or on the other side of the block for Halloween. There's like a Jack and Sally print. This thing is massive forever and always. They do have this doormat for Stitch. Happy Haunt and that's Stitch on a little pumpkin. Oh God, this is disturbing where his mouth is all zipped up and looks like Hannibal Lecter or something. So I gotta try to eat someone. Okay, I'm digging this. It's the clock from the Haunted Mansion. Not too much there in Box Lunch. We're still on our mission over to Hot Topic. I forgot how big this mall is. Now, if you ever wonder what happened to the Disney store here at the mall, it turned into a Ver Ver Vercheny? I don't know, but this is the old Disney store. This is so sad and depressing. This is what it has become. Right here is where the castle was. Um, there's a whole big castle here where the girls would buy all their princess dresses. And the uh, walkway is still here. Okay, so remember the walkway would take you all the way over here and there'd be a little place to sit. And they'd be showing like Disney commercials. Now they're just showing Miss Universe on the TV screen. This is what replaced. <laughs> The Disney store. I hope you're happy, Bob. See, so yeah, there's like the wall here, right? So you can still kind of see where it was. It's so bizarre. Like this, remember there's all like the plushes and everything over here. Then you have the silhouettes, all the Disney characters up there. Is the uh, mannequin about to turn into like full on Reed Richards? The arms are just going to stretch. They have a uh, Bugs Bunny, uh, what is he, s smoking a joint? That was incredibly depressing. All the shirts were like $150 with just bedazzled all over them. All right, here we go. We're at Hot Topic. Well, bad news. They were sold at Altamont Springs Hot Topic by accident and they got in a lot of trouble apparently this morning so they released them they weren't supposed to the florida ball one doesn't even have the jerseys yet it's a huge leak that they're now going to be having halloween horror nights merchandise at hot topic this is the first time that jack the clown has gone like mainstream right and to put it in hot topic i wonder if it'll be nationwide or just florida and local but that's some pretty big news we got to stop by uh, something that's spooky and abandoned um a sears store oh man these stores have not changed at all Welcome back. It's not a lot of merchandise, so everything is just super spread out the racks to make it look like there's actual stuff here. But it's not a good sign when every single thing has a 30 to 40% off sale. I am the only person here in the appliance area. This is, <laughs> I don't see a soul in sight. It's like all these empty shelves. Like there's some stuff on the shelves, not fully abandoned, but oh my God, look at where all the sockets and wrenches are. These are all empty. There's like a couple. But this is bizarre to see that these are all empty. But there's just like one or two of a couple sizes. And then the rest is all just like abandoned. I remember how big and popular Sears used to be back in the day, but now it's just come to this. Okay, let's go up to the second level. What could they put up here? I feel like there's gonna be nothing here. It's just so bizarre because there's no like advertisements or like nice pictures. They're all just like these blank walls. Now this is all blocked off. This is like <laughs> half the store. I 
I'm just like honestly speechless with the current state of Sears. A lot of it comes down to right Amazon and online shopping because how many times do you actually go into the store to buy clothes? I just order, order it on Amazon. If it doesn't fit, I just ship it back. This is a two story Sears and I'm literally like the only person in here. This is another half of the store that's just like abandoned. Look how old this register is, right? This is like early 2000s. It's like they never updated. They like a watch and jewelry service. This has just been replaced with pictures. Up to 60% off clothing for family. This is what, where you get your eyes checked. What is this? Because there's Mickey, but like, it's just like. <laughs> they do some very interesting artwork. the signage has been removed. This is so eerie and so creepy. Like there's like one or two shirts on the wall and then just like, is this where the fitting room used to be? Yeah, this is where the fitting room used to be. How bizarre, that kid is now hiding <laughs> the fitting room. These walls used to be fully stocked and they would have photos all up here. Now even in Sears, you can find Grogu merch. Any store on the planet, I feel like you can find Kroku merch. Now here's one last quick shot of the upstairs. This is, so, <laughs> this is so bizarre. The earrings, it's just like one of each design. And each aisle is just so bare bones. Looks like it's gonna be real slim pickings for um, shoe sizes. I hope you guys are enjoying this, right? This is like my life. I like going on these weird different adventures and journeys. Who would have thought we'd end up in a uh, abandoned Sears pretty much for a Holly Hornets update video. But hey, that's what he's signed up for when he hit the subscribe button. I guess old storage. Look, full on empty shelves. I just realized it's the same shoe. The entire, <laughs> it's the same red van shoe and over here, it's like the same black boot and like the same blue shoes. It blows my mind how much of an impact just having like the models on the walls make a difference and make it so much more welcoming. When you take them all away, they're not creepily smiling at you. It's very eerie. Now, I would say the front of the store where you come in from the mall, I feel like is the most populated with clothing, but the further you go back, when you go up, it's just abandoned. Let me know down in the comments, what was the last time you went to a Sears? The Pumpkin Lord has returned, but on Twitter, right? So on um, November 1st, the Pumpkin Lord tweeted, I'll be back. He just tweeted, I told you so. A little Boo responded with, Dear Kankle, he's back again and shoved me back with other pumpkins. I recognize a lot of them from last year. How is he back, Lil Boo? I don't know where his phone is, but he's back on Twitter. This scare zone just completely changed overnight. All right, so first off, when we're entering in, 31 has been burned into the fence and they've added this. So it's all different types of candy. It's connecting to the major sweets. There's like Reese's up there. Look at all these lollipops. Now there's some Halloween masks that are stuck into the mud. And here's a bunch of more candy. There's a bunch of blood on there. But the biggest reveal, right? We have a little boo on a bag. So our boo and savior was on this little trick-or-treater's bag. There's also a little um, ghost. His name is Bra. I totally read that wrong. Uh, it's like the dripping of the paint. It says boo, but it looked like B-R-A, bra. Now behind there's a bunch of more candies with these pumpkins. Now all these vines, right? The Pumpkin Lord's vines are taking over this scare zone. So this is just one little box. So I'm guessing that tonight they're gonna add more in this scare zone. I know I thought I'd come to Universal a lot, but you have me beat. How many times have you visited the park this year? So this year, 215. Last month, I went every single day. What's the difference between Disney and Universal? What makes you wanna keep coming here so much more? So I'm actually a past member to both. I, I think I actually enjoy Universal more than Disney. I think the reason why I love Universal more, I think it's put more into it. Now on the other side, no 31, but we can see the vines, you know, creeping up to where all the pumpkins are. So I'm guessing throughout the next couple nights, we're gonna see vines cover the entire thing. The scare zone is slowly coming to life. I don't know what this is. It could be something scary underneath there. We'll find out. Now over here on the main stage, 
they've set up all these speakers. Do they have a concert? Are they setting up for HHN, right? To blast the music throughout all the theme park. Hashtag the pandas up there, waving to everyone. Now, back here by the New York Public Library, they've added all these lights up here. I think they'll do probably projections or just spooky themed lights for HHN right there. And this is new. When you're coming out of the Tribute Store, I think they changed the plants that are here, but there's all these lights that are strung up, right? That kind of connect with like the little parade festival happening out here with Major Suites. Still have no idea when the Tribute Store is opening. Normally it opens a couple days before HHN. Hopefully soon. I really want to see what's in there. Now over here next to the judges booth, I believe a couple of those are new, but this is where all that candy was and it's now been tarped up. I don't know if it's just to pr protect the candy underneath there, but they've added some spooky elements that are too terrifying for the day guests. Louis is doing their uh, character dining buffet. Should I do it? Do you guys want to watch that? It's like $55. Now we hopped into Louis restaurant. Uh, this is where they'll probably do the character little meet and greet right there. They have it all blocked off. So they're setting up props and everything and that's where you'll get your photos of the scare actors I believe. They're testing these lights. They have purple lights out here and outside the food truck they added this. I'm digging this. This is what I'm talking about for displays right? You have like these hordes of zombies coming towards you with hands reaching out of the ground and you have a little bat and then there's more little bats up here and there's a hole in that zombie's hand. Then on this side there's just some more bats on a tree. I feel like the team knows what they're doing. So we'll see how everything looks during the nighttime with all the new light effects. Now it's the same menu. I'm guessing in a couple weeks they'll probably switch it to a new spooky uh, menu. So we're heading into San Francisco. They've added a bunch of stuff. Over here they added like a cauldron. It's hollowed out so I don't know if they'll put anything in here. But then there's like hammer. Some sort of antler maybe from an elk. I want to say saber tooth tiger but I'm probably wrong. And there's like a bird cage so I wonder if they'll put props in there. I don't know. It, this scare zone is now like finally happening. This is a big deal. They've added a tarp here so that means there's a victim or something spooky or scary underneath it. Anytime you see these gray tarps it's because there's something terrifying underneath it. I'm looking down at the bottom, I see like some moss coming out, but they've also added corn, kind of connecting all the scare zones, right, with the pumpkin lord and the scarecrows by adding in the corn. Yeah, so they flesh out this whole area with new corn. It really helps hide the speakers. And over here on the side, they've added some more corn. Hopefully we do not have a hurricane this year. Now, over here, they've added some more ornate pots and pans. They've added like a purple dragon. How does this fit into the story? I have so many questions, but I'm super excited now. Now, they're slowly putting out the scare zone, but everything isn't going to fully be out by opening night because there's a whole crew when the park shuts down they put out all these other show elements right before the park opens for HHN. It's kind of like at what like an hour, hour and a half like turnaround time. Even up to opening day we're not going to get everything out here in the scare zones. When opening day does happen we're going to be surprised with a bunch of other things. Just standard wood the other day. Now they've added all the sticks and the moss to kind of blend it all in. So are we going to be like dealing with trappers? More bird cages and antlers right here. I feel like it's missing one giant show element right there or like in the center. The stage is cool but I feel like we're missing something big. Now it was also announced in Hollywood, I forgot to talk about this in the last video, the Death Eaters are coming to their Hogsmeade in Universal Studios Hollywood for their Halloween Horror Nights. We still don't have a confirmation I believe for ours. Uh, normally it happens at Islands of Adventure. The Death Eaters come out they kind of like do a little show and everything and there's a whole projection show of like the dark arts happening on the castle. So I don't know if, if that show's happening in Hollywood but they are going to have the Death Eaters which is pretty cool. We still have no confirmation about ours. Oh no. No they fixed it. Universal, what did you do? No, they just ruined it. Oh, y'all gonna be upset when I show you this, what Universal just did. I think this is partially my fault for pointing this out, but um, they filled in the hole. Now, as we know, this was the birthplace of Little Boo. Took off the piece that was there and filled it completely in and then awkwardly put a menu board. You can tell this wasn't planned because these have like lights behind them. This is just kind of styrofoam. Looks like they just cut it out last night and it's not lined up properly. So I guess Universal was not happy with what we were calling this, the birthplace of Little Boo. It just looks so awkward now with how, how they have it set up. Now, I really wish they did like a Treehouse of Horrors overlay or like a whole scare zone. Uh, we're gonna pop into the Quickie Mart real quick. They do have some Halloween merchandise. I, this, this sticker is so big and unnecessary. Glows in the dark. It says Happy Halloween on it. It's gonna run you $28 for this t-shirt. We did get Treehouse of Horrors merchandise. Okay, we have Kang and Kodo, but this could be $55 just for one of them. So if you want the set, right, it's gonna be over $100 for the Kang and Kodo set. But that's cool they're getting the, the Trails of Horrors merchandise.
merchandise here. Oh, I just noticed how to cook for 40 humans, a little cookbook. And then over here, they got their little laser blaster. And they do have another Trias of Horrors shirt. This is gonna be $28. Happy haunting. Millhouse, Lisa and Bart being chased by Homer. Boy, ink glows in the dark. This lady just thought this was crusty crap. I think my favorite Trias of Horror episode is when the lard lad comes alive, right? When Homer steals this donut and all the billboards come alive. I'm looking at the booth with the lights on. They're changing and I kind of like it. It does not look bad like how it looked during the daytime. During the daytime, it just did not work. But see it during the nighttime, Universal had a vision and I think they're pulling it off. It's crazy how much lighting makes a difference. During the daytime, I was like, this looks terrible. But seeing at night, it looks really cool. These are probably also gonna be lit up. Yellow string of lights. The door glows, right? So you have this like menacing pumpkin and then above you have the scarecrows. Here's gonna be like the church or cathedral, right? So this is all backlit now. The symbols with a skull and the bat are all lit up now. And the menu board's gonna be right here, but it just pops so much more during the nighttime. Universal proved me wrong on this one. It's looking pretty good during the nighttime. But over the next couple nights, they're gonna start building the giant barn here. Now, next where the Day of the Dead booth is gonna be, they've turned this fountain into kind of like a little Day of the Dead. Not an altar, but you know, where they put up their offerings to the relatives, right? With the candles and the bright flowers. So it looks like all those lights are gonna be lit up during the nighttime, and there's gonna be, there's gonna be spotlights right here shining. I think this is very inventive, right? They turned what was just a standard fountain into something immersive that fits in with HHM. Here's a better look at this booth during the nighttime. They have like these black lights illuminating all the skulls. This is so bright and vibrant. You can spot this from a mile away. Over the next couple of days, again, we're just gonna get more and more detail happening. They have the many boards now lit up. They've added flowers down here. Battery Park, these have gone up. They've added all these posters for the weekend. I'm guessing the weekend's gonna have a blinky blink cup this year. Now these are gonna be like creepy toad men in the house. I've heard they're terrifying, but it's called the weekend after hours nightmare bar. You can see his eyes are illuminated down there. I feel like they'll probably add more detail and theming, but right now they just kind of have the posters up saying what the bar is. Who's ready for it to say Mel's dying? I'm sorry if the quality of the footage isn't as good as it normally is. My R6 4K camera is being serviced and the lens that I normally use being serviced because I want it to all be ready and back to perfection before HHN happens in the haunt season. So I have no malfunctions and everything because I want to give you guys the right, like the best possible content for all things spooky and scary. It is past eight o'clock and it is over 100 degrees. So when you're coming here, plan accordingly. Short sleeve shirts, shorts, don't bring hoodies because <laughs> you're just gonna sweat so much waiting in those lines. See if there's any new merchandise here at Five and Dime. Now we did get some new merchandise. Now the one thing I love about Universal is they put all their prices on their tags. I know, it's a lot to ask for. Something Wicked is brewing. So it looks like a little coffee mug. On the back it says, only the dead need sleep. This is going to be me the entire haunt season producing all this stuff. There's like the coffee oozing out of the pumpkin and there's like a witch's zombie hand. Now for $35, they have this black cat jumping out of this pumpkin. Why is Universal doing this to me? Um, Chucky is back. He, he's like a bad rash that won't go away. It's Chucky. As you know, he was everywhere last year, but nowhere. It says, want to play. And the reason we know he's going to be here is because it literally says Halloween Horror Night 2022. Now this is going to be $30 for this shirt. So some of the tie-dye hoodies, again, pick these up first thing, because with Universal, they always do one round of like tie-dye, and then when they sell out, then it'll just be kind of a standard black hoodie. Just like walking through a scare zone right at night just is getting me so hyped that I cannot wait for opening night. For this food booth, it's a little different. They have skeleton hands instead of zombie hands. The lights are on in what used to be the Monsters Cafe. We can kind of see a better look. It is completely gutted. Okay, we're over to these booths. Again, during the daytime, I did not like them, but Universal, I think it did a good job. So this is gonna be kind of like the ghostly phantom one, right? You kind of have this silhouette at the door, then like the ring girl at the top. Now it's very bright on the camera, but in person, it's kind of like the right amount of brightness and darkness. You can see the characters properly. I was worried because during the daytime, it, they just did not look good because just kind of this white background. But with them putting the backlight, they look a lot better. Then over here at the Ski Mask Gremlin, this looks straight up like Monster House or something. It looks a lot better in person than it does on camera. But you know, the mouth is illuminated and the, and the eyeballs and the trick or treat sign. Here's a better look at the uh, zombie one. Again, I don't know how I feel about that silhouette. It looks a lot better at nighttime than it does during the daytime. And then here's the one where the vampire is with the coffin. Throughout all of HHN, I'll be reviewing all of this food for y'all. And then here's the blueberry stand. Again, it looks a lot better at nighttime. So here's a better look at the skulls. And then up here you have like the Grim Reaper and the skeletons reaching for him. I never noticed this, but the uh, umbrellas for the outside of the minions queue, when they're all folded up, they look like a banana. We are heading out. Let's go back to the office and talk about everything. Okay, so guys, we are back at home. Big update. It's currently the final count that we are less than two weeks away now from Halloween Horror Night 2022. How do you all feel about the, uh, 
birthplace of Little Boo being removed. And we can see the before photos and then the after photos. They had, they just didn't try to fill in that piece. They made it bigger and wider off to the side to make sure nobody had any thoughts about what that could be. We will forever miss that landmark, but I'm glad we were able to document it and we all got a good laugh out of it for the week it was there. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, join the family. I love the family. Because I'm gonna keep you up to date on all things spooky and scary. All right guys, I love you all. Please stay safe and I'll see y'all tomorrow with another Halloween Horror Nights update. Chase the final countdown.